Okay, so um, I'm going to give this screen recording thing a bit of a go. Um, bear with me because I have experienced a little bit of lag um, and delay in the voice in the previous uh, little test that I've done. Okay, so everyone should have completed a block plan of their resort. This is a very rough one of mine. I, I drew up for you as a demo. Um, let's pretend that this is my premier block. Okay, and for the purpose of this exercise, we'll also pretend that it is 30 meters by 30 meters in a square. Okay, north is to the right of the screen, and uh, if I go to this drawing here, it should make a bit more sense that we've got the ocean and the foreshore. Here's our block, north arrow indicating that it's to the right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new project in Revit and we're just going to draw up the property line for this for our prestige block so just going to create a new project to begin with this is our section view and I'm just going to delete it so that I don't have to deal with it so that line there with section view we might need it later on I can bring it back if I want to um, if I come up here you'll see that north is to the top I'm going to rotate that now. It's quite simple by just going to um, uh, what's under, under Manage, and you've got Project Location. Before I do that, but I'm just going to double click on Site so that I'm in my Site view, and I'm going to rotate Project North. I click on that and I click 90 degrees clockwise and then click OK OK so now if I go to this point here it should tell me that that is north which is correct All right. the reason we're rotating the orientation is all our sketches have been done in this format it's going to look better in an A3 folder if we have our, our landscape have all our sketches set to sort of a landscape format and not in a portrait style. Okay, so now I've got my um, orientation rotated. It's just a matter of going to massing and sight, clicking on property line, then selecting create by sketching, and I simply just zoom out a little bit and I'll punch in my 30 meters by 30 meters yours might be different or it should be and there's my property line like everything in Revit if it's still purple it means you haven't finalized something so as I look around the screen I can see a big green tick up here if I select that the property line then becomes blue and shows the outline for my property Okay, so now that we've got our property line, we can start thinking about uh, creating a topo surface for this block of land. If we have a look at our uh, original drawing that you were given in the assignment, you'll soon realise that along this boundary is all 10 metres above sea level or Australian height datum. Okay, that's the eastern boundary. If we go all the way to the western boundary, it's 15 metres above sea level. We figured out in class that for every metre you travel to the west, you'll rise 45 millimetres above sea level. Pretty simple stuff. And for the purpose of our assignment, we don't need to get it spot on, but we need to be, be fairly close. Okay. So, what that means is, if I go back to Revit, and we have a look at my original block plan, we've got 30 metres that we're going up the western boundary okay so uh, we'll go to this one here and inside I've got my property line I know that's 30 meters so what I can do is I'm in sight if I go to site and massing I can then click on topo surface 
and automatically it's given me an elevation of 10 meters. That's because I was doing a little practice before I started recording. For you, it's probably gonna say zero. So you need to enter in 10 meters. Okay, so it's gonna be 10 meters all along this line. So I only need to put in two points. Okay, just double check. Uh, oh, once I'm done, I'll double check that this has been rotated. I'm pretty sure it has. Um, I can then figure out that for 30 meters, I know it's gonna be 13, uh, sorry, 1.3 meters rise. Okay, pretty simple. I'll just go to calculator. And I'm going to do 30 times 45, and that gives me my 1,350 mil in rise. So all I'm going to do is, I've got my 10 meters, so it's going to change to 11 meters, 350, so 11,350 mil, and that's going to be the height once I get to my western boundary click that in, done, okay. I think automatically this line that we're seeing here would be uh, the half meter rise from there to there. I'm not too sure, I'll have a little look around and, and see what it is. Um, but that's gonna give me a straight slope. If I wanted to jazz it up a bit, I could put some heights in between to give me a curving slope. That's up to you. For me, I'm just gonna give this ourselves a nice straight slope straight slope between two different heights okay so I need to finish that off okay that's done there now if I was to go to an elevation from the south I'll go to the north actually okay we can see there's our hill the oceans down here and this is to the west. Uh, Mrs. Oakley is doing a lot of announcements at the moment. Rightio. I can then pick up my level one, which is really my ground floor, and I can move it to where I want to cut the block. Okay. So I've cut that block there. Um, so now my levels are sweet. I'm going to go back into my site view under floor plans and I'm going to put in a building pad so this is going to be the flat piece of dirt where I build my, my, my structure okay and I'm going to select a rectangle and I'll just draw it in like that if I go to my properties it's locking onto ground floor I might make it go to level 1 and I'm going to finish that sketch and that should have cut into my block uh, if I click on the little house up here it will give me a 3D view and there it is there of my block cut out at the moment it doesn't look that flash I can change my detail level to fine and this to realistic okay and now I'm starting to see a nice pad on which I can start to build my house.